So regional nerve blocks, <coughs> regional nerve blocks includes peripheral nerve blocks and central nerve blocks. So first we'll discuss peripheral nerve blocks. Among these peripheral nerve blocks, brachial plexus block is most frequently given and brachial plexus can be blocked at four different sites, intrascalene, supraclavicular, infraclavicular and axillary level. So four levels we can block brachial plexus. Interscalene means we are blocking brachial plexus between anterior and middle scalene. So just at the level of Crickard, when you go laterally, first groove you will see at the posterior border of stenoclodium steroid and interscalene. When you just go little lateral, you will feel the second groove. So this is a groove between anterior and middle scalene. So here we insert our needle and go downwards and medially till you elicit the paresthesia. And the point where you elicit the paresthesia, you inject your drug. Nowadays, many centers, they are giving these blocks ultrasound guided and uh, nerve stimulator they also use instead of eliciting paresthesia. You can use a nerve stimulator also, but it's still the traditional and you can say the most basic approach is to elicit the paresthesia. So interscalene approach, the block is given between anterior and middle scale knee. The major disadvantage or limitation of this block is that ulnar nerve get spared. Ulnar nerve get spared means interscale knee approach cannot be utilized for hand because nerve supply of hand is mainly through the ulnar nerve. Then second approach is supraclavicular. So supraclavicular block is the most commonly used approach. So the supraclavicular approach is the most frequently used approach. And here what we do, just above the midpoint of clavicle, you try to palpate the subclavian artery. Then you enter your needle lateral to the artery and keep on going downwards and laterally till you elicit the paresthesia. Or if you are using a nerve stimulator, you can see a muscle twitching in any of the muscle of the uh, upper limb. Now, the major problem or you can say the most bothersome problem of uh, the supraclavicular approach is pneumothorax. And the incidence of pneumothorax can be as high as 6%. But this pneumothorax since is caused by a needle only, so usually it's not bothersome. But the problem comes if your block fails and you decide to give GA, then you know that by positive pressure ventilation, a small pneumothorax can get converted into tension pneumothorax. So our aim should be to avoid pneumothorax. And the best policy to avoid pneumothorax is that always maintain the direction of your needle lateral to the artery. So this lateral is very important. Lateral to artery is very important. Why? Because dome of the pleura, you know, comes like this medially. So by chance, if your needle become a little medial, you can easily puncture the pleura. So direction should always be lateral to prevent pneumothorax. So this lateral is very important. Then third route through which uh, you can block brachial plexus is infraclavicular. So classical infraclavicular approach means you are just blocking the, in supraclavicular we are blocking just above the midpoint of clavicle. In infraclavicular we are blocking just below the midpoint of clavicle. But in classical approach the incidence of pneumothorax become too high that people start stop using this infraclavicular approach. Then they devised a modified approach that is coracoid approach means brachial plexus blocked below the tip of coracoid process means almost at the shoulder level. But with this approach the block failure rate become too high 
that again people stop avoiding it. So infracollicular approach is hardly used. Nobody is using. Fourth approach, axillary approach is frequently used and the advantage of axillary approach